Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank, and with me is Ben. I hate you so much. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> I, first off, there should have been alcohol. And second off, there should have been some more alcohol. Uh, because we're talking about the Book of Henry. I mean, A, I've made it very clear that this movie is terrible. I've... I made that very clear. Okay. I didn't know what kind of terrible Second to ball. expect, though. <laughs> I mean, technically, I laid it all out in my. It, it got review, really but... dark really fast. Oh, yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I thought it was just going to be oh, yeah. a preachy jackass 11 year old, but no. Dude, nope. it was. I was like, I felt yes. bad because I'm like, I can't bring myself to care at all <laughs> like, was... well no it, the, the movie is w- so out of its depth it's just like movie you're so bad how do you think you can handle this yeah oh no, my god no no they should have just stuck to the like overly smart 11 year old thing yeah i was hoping it would be like one of those bad films that you can revisit once in a while and like have a couple of drinks I mean... and laugh at it i don't know if i'd want to do that like I kind of hate myself I, I, because some of the <laughs> some of the like emotional parts got to me a little bit because I'm not quite as cynical as other people. Oh yeah, see, not, none of it get to me at all. Yeah, I figured. Just, I, I could figured. To, I could watch this movie over and over again. I figured. Maybe but, um, like I might. But it's that it. stuff. It's that. It's like the the child of you stuff is why it's like actually one of the worst movies and not like. Just like Maximum Ride last year, which I saw, which is fucking a garbage movie, but like was kind of on my favorites list because I just had so much fun with how bad it was. Yeah, sure. This is like, no, it's abhorrent. Like people who made this was a mistake. Everyone who was involved in this, they made a mistake. Uh, Yeah. Spoiler alert. There's child abuse, not towards Henry and Henry dies. Just going to throw that out there right away. (sighs) Oh, my God. He gets cancer. I actually cancer. called that. I as soon as he had the first <laughs> headache, I'm like, "It's a fucking tumor, isn't it? Well, is that why he's yes. smart? Is that why he's smart?" Not, and then it wasn't. I was kind of upset about that. I was hoping he'd turn into I mean, an idiot right before he died. It's pretty clear, pretty quickly, what kind of movie this is going to be. And when you see that, you're like, "Yep, I, yep, I figured he'd." Well, sort of. It's sort of clear. This movie is much weirder, yeah. honestly. I than... really, I was really banking. On like, and I mean it. I ditched this notion <laughs> a little bit into when he's at the hospital. Uh-huh. I like, okay, this clearly isn't what I thought. But I really thought they were gonna do like a. You have a brain tumor, okay? That that's bad, and uh, we mm-hmm. got rid of it. And then Henry suddenly doesn't know what stocks are. Like, I thought he was gonna be back <laughs> to just like being a normal kid with memories of how he was smart at one point or something. But was it that? And I don't know if that would have been it, better or worse. It, it definitely wasn't It, it was that. not. And this whole time, I'm just thinking, like, everything about this is awful. Like, everyone, I hate everyone <laughs> right now. But you were always at the top Honestly, of the list. Look, I think Naomi Watts is amazing that in her her ability to, like, actually act is kind of incredible considering she's given like one of the worst parts in any movie in terms of writing. Yeah. <laughs> Just so bad. Yeah, no, it was oh. I did appreciate <laughs> and I will never ever forget this how uh what's her name? Let's let's look quick. Um Sarah Silverman? Yeah. Uh she called Henry Hank. I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> Ever. The part where Sarah Silverman's character, like, kind of makes out with Henry. Yeah. Is weird yeah. in a movie about child abuse. Yeah, dude. Like, just puts her lips right there. I'm like, huh. I, like, are we going to... What are you doing, is that, movie? Is that getting addressed again? Nope. Okay. No. <laughs> I guess. Like, oh, and Henry's fucking terrible. Like, he's just his way of always having to explain everything. Yeah. 
I get like the when he when he gets like the MRI comes back and he he asks the doctor to look at it yeah. and the doctor like, oh here here you could look at it clearly you understand I'm so mad I mean you know I heard that this movie was a prototype <laughs> for young Sheldon <sighs> actually my I think my my favorite slash least favorite bit of his explanations when was when he's on the phone he's like well I guess that's the benefit of being born in a bull market and fuck off Henry. Fuck off with your <laughs> stocks knowledge and how how the fuck did you grow to six hundred and eighty thousand dollars anyway? Like, what was I your mean, base for that? You didn't like I wanna know when he started this. I wanna know what his initial investment <laughs> was. Because his mom's probably not making tons of money. Like, was there an inheritance no. at some point that I missed? No, he's you know, he's just day trading from the payphone out of school. Yeah. You know, how it is. Like what, he throw his allowance <laughs> at it? Like the Henry yeah. story, how I turned pocket change into a million dollars. Yes. He probably killed someone. He probably invested in Bitcoin. Probably murdered someone. I mean he tried. <laughs> he definitely he definitely Actually he didn't even no. try. He was too much of a pussy. He set it no. up for someone else to do. Well, I mean, he was dying. That's an excuse. Yeah, he whatever. had nothing to lose. <laughs> like, he was whatever. Like, I don't know how old. I forget how old he's supposed 11. to be. 11. Definitely yeah. 11. Or like, he's 11. Yeah. 11 or 12. No, it was. Yeah, they did that bullshit. It's like, 11. he's going to be 12 in like a month or some shit like that. <laughs> Got to get that one in there. I'm 11. And- he had one day till retirement from being 11. <laughs> I'm 11 in 236 days. I mean, he does organize a lot when he sneaks out of the hospital dying of a brain tumor. He sets up a lot of shit. Yeah. Secretly. He probably could have just murdered. He really could have. But it had to be the perfect murder. It had to. See, that's the bullshit, though. Like, at that point. It had to operate under the Rube Goldberg mechanisms that he envisioned the world through. I'd like to set up. I mean, for being pretty smart, Henry it's was whimsical. pretty goddamn stupid. Because it's whimsical. Let's see. Oh, I, have was like, I have like days left to live. Maybe I could just kill the guy myself. <laughs> Instead of making my mom do this. Like, <laughs> didn't care about her at all. I, by the way, I'm going to... I, my thoughts on this, I'm way too primal. To just like go in a <laughs> chronological order, so I'm just gonna jump around. Like there's way All too right. much. I love that the ending. <laughs> you know, um, when she like tucks uh, Henry and Peter into bed, and she's like, "Open her closed," mm-hmm. and they like do the they each want the opposite, and then she's like, "On or off," and one wants on, one yeah, wants yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Then at the end, the girl and Peter both want the same thing. I'm like, she's just happy that she doesn't have a little shitlord like being difficult all the time. Yeah, everything's better now. Out for Henry's dead. Yeah, <laughs> everything's better now that Henry is dead. And the best part is he made a rich before was kind he went. Of... <laughs> it's kind of terrible. <sighs> kind of a monster. And also, she was just like a terrible mom. I don't. I mean, un- she was bad. I don't. Mm. But she told them bedtime stories. I mean, that's the one time she sees so like, oh, yeah, this is a mob. Yeah, and then this Henry shits mob. all over Not way. a person who sh- moves the controller too much when they play video games. All right, well, that's your story. <laughs> she's, she's getting into I it. I didn't like the story, but it was told well. Henry is uh, such a piece of yeah. shit. He's terrible. And I'm mad he wasn't getting bullied. <laughs> that it was his brother getting <laughs> yeah. bullied. Oh, and I don't know how I feel about... I don't think we're ever told how old his brother is. I took it as being, like, six or eight or some shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This movie actually did the opposite of what I what issues I normally have with small children being portrayed in films. Um, One that sticks out is... Uh, ah, Fuck, I can't remember the exact title. Uh, guy and girl meet. It's like a romantic comedy, and they each have like a thousand kids, and they move into like some house together, and all their kids are like trying to get along. And there's like, I think it's supposed to be a four year old or something. 
or a five-year-old mm. maybe and this is when i this is the movie that made me realize i first uh, first made me realize that i hate this trope just the dumbest kid just the absolute like i can't think of a single five-year-old that is that stupid like there's sand like the, you know crazy shenanigans happening in the store as you do and like i don't know some bags of sand get like punctured and the kid is just like yelling all these incoherent things like a three-year-old might i don't know it pissed me mm. off and book of henry did the opposite of that i felt like peter was <laughs> way too smart like i don't know he comprehended way too much of what was going on and i'm yeah Maybe it's an influence of Henry, but also, like, I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, when when fucking Peter is yelling at, at his mom, telling her, I'm just a kid, you need to, like, treat this correctly or whatever. If you're old <laughs> enough like to have self-awareness, Henry. you're old enough to deal with this. <sighs> Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Henry's book is pretty great, though. And his tape that he recorded so much that all is built to respond exactly yeah. to everything his mom says. Yeah. The fucking turn right, your other right joke. Mm-hmm. Classic. Are you done swearing now? Classic. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty... Uh... His monologue... So, like, while he was dying, he had time to record, like, weeks of... Audio? I don't know, dude. Cassette? Probably, I, I, I don't. There's so much. Just, <laughs> just roll with it. I was really hoping after, um, when his mom was like about to pull the trigger, and mm. he's like walking her through it, you know. Yeah. I was really hoping that we'd get like a "You did it. <laughs> it's over." <laughs> like the whole like you killed him. And instead, we somehow get a monologue that is related to her not killing him. Is what I thought. Like his no, it's definitely he's definitely assuming she killed him in that monologue. Okay, I guess I was. No, that's what I'm saying. I probably yeah, yeah. phrased maybe I said it wrong, but that's what I'm saying. Like, no, I phrased it right, and now I'm understanding wrong. It felt, I guess I was just interpreting it like he was speaking. It it seemed more relevant to her not killing him, I thought. I don't know. The fact that it's muddled probably speaks for itself. <laughs> what a terrible goddamn film. I wanted to I, I wanted mean... to throw it out on Twitter so bad. I wanted just live to <laughs> the entire goddamn thing. I mostly <laughs> held back. Mostly. <laughs> We should have done a live commentary. <laughs> it definitely would have been. <laughs> would have been something else. It's something to keep in mind <clears throat> for the future. Yeah. I'd actually thought about it, but I forgot before the, before you watched it. Um, the, the part where it goes... F- this How quickly this movie goes from... Oh, it's about this annoying kid who's too smart... Oh, it's about this child abuse happening next door. Oh, it's about this kid dying of brain cancer. Oh, that kid's dead. And now his mom has to murder the guy who's committing child abuse. Yeah. Like, (laughs) it's fucking whiplash. It's Like, that's what makes the movie amazing. But I can't get my head around that anyone thought this was a good idea to make it to a movie. Yeah, it has. But, like, some... they went into this earnestly. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't even. And I mean, that they'll deny it, but, like, <laughs> I feel like this, like, this also cost that director his shot at directing a Star Wars movie. Because he was slated for uh, the next episode, episode nine. I mean, I could see that. Some Disney execs just sitting in the film like, all right, let's see what this guy's got. Film ends just like, holy shit. Uh, (laughs) You got that list of names? Yeah, wipe his. He's out. I mean, it's also because of how bad it did critically and 
financially? Because I mean, I think you got the job because you directed Jurassic World, which was such a huge financial hit. I feel like, but this was his passion project. This was the th- like you, he directed one of the highest grossing movies, so he got to do exactly what he wanted to do, and it was this. Oh, I mean, kind of sucks that his taste is shit. Though on one, on yeah, it sucks when people are terrible. I can, I can definitely see the the film resonating with a certain group of people, and I feel like the overlap is just if it were a Venn diagram of people who like this film and God's Not Dead, I think it's just a circle. Like both films are bad in almost the same way. From a from a film standpoint, anyway, this, this one had problems of like, yeah, trying to do too much. This one's series. more built to appeal to shitty teenage girls. I could see that. I could definitely the whole writing our story bullshit nonsense. Mm-hmm. I just need also just need to take a moment to appreciate that this is a movie where child abuse even though it involves a murder plot to kill the man who committed child abuse the child abuse is actually undone through the power of interpretive dance it's really that is in fact true that's the key it's the key to solving this by the it's the girl from all those sia music videos what the girl who plays Christina is in like lots of all every Sia music video. That's what she's known for, for being a dancer. The like the like the the, the girl. The girl? I didn't actually know yeah. her name. Yeah, her character's name is Christina. She's Maddie Ziegler. How old is she then? Is she still just a kid? Or is she just like older than she looked yeah. in the Okay, she's just in music yeah, videos. She's... Yeah. That. Hmm. Okay. Well, I haven't seen the music videos, but. That's fair. But yeah, she's known as a dancer. Okay. So, that's, you know, why she dances at the end. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Oh, poor Dean Norris. Uh, Served better. Guy playing Glenn. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was trying to, I was trying to like quickly come up with some Breaking Bad pun, and it just, it, I wasn't fast <laughs> enough. It was not fast enough at all. Yeah. Maybe like a minerals. No, I'm done. I'm done. We're moving on. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Uh... I think God's Not Dead is actually a better film. Just it, probably in the okay. same way that like Maximum Ride was. Like I can at least watch God's Not Dead and have a have a laugh. But this is like I mean, I had lots of laughs during this. I did, but I don't know. It just it still is so disjointed. I mean, yes. It's completely insane. This is it's not it's not coherent but that's all to its, it's benefit yeah as a watchable thing to I me i suppose at, at this point as a terrible movie i the, the the appeals it's really just that it's also about that child abuse it's like you fucking movie come the fuck on yeah i i think something that definitely could have enhanced the watching experience for me like jokes as, jokes about drinks aside, um, mm-hmm. if I could have had like I don't know the directors in the room jacking off, like the <laughs> schlucking sound would really just set the tone for me. Just anyone involved in the creation, it was, it it's just so obvious and in your face. Like I'm kind of surprised that every time Henry spoke, there wasn't orchestral swelling in the background. I mean, you can really feel how clever. The filmmakers think they are. Oh yeah. Even even just 
in the scenes when no one was even speaking, like just when it's shots, like even in the cinematography, you, it's just like, yep. you guys think you're so goddamn good and mm-hmm. you're not. And it's nope. <laughs> also, why is Sarah Silverman in this? <laughs> yeah. Like when she came out, I was, fucking... I was like, excuse me. Oh, and that was before like, how... she made out with a prepubescent <laughs> kid. Like how? How did that happen? Why? Just this that not like register? Like this is stupid. Like I don't understand. Yeah. How a comedian can approach that? It that was um fucking thing. Was the the cook in the film? You know, for the diner, the manager at the diner, owner, whatever. Is that guy in Saturday Night Live? Is that like that guy? I swear to God, he's done, like, other things, and he was just kind of in there as, like, greasy <laughs> diner owner. Yes. I think that's Bobby Moynihan. Sure. I think that's who that was, because he's in, listed on the cast, and... That's almost assuredly him, then. And he's on Saturday Night Live, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, he's just randomly in there. Like when he when he has the letter. I mean, this movie has this movie has stars. Even the kid actors that the guy the kid playing Peter was in Room, and it, he was also he's also in that movie Wonder that just came out. Uh, the guy the kid playing Henry is the main character of It. Okay, okay. So first off, first off, I... which made the see that Henry was the main character of It. Made it more enjoyable to me. That would, yeah, that would definitely. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> and that and that it movie opens with him ha- like he's built, like very early on he's built like a c- copy of the sewer system of the city to track where his little brother could have ended up. Just like, yep, that, all right. I guess that's this kid's thing. I just, I don't, okay, so for the kid who played Peter, Jacob Tremblay, yeah. I don't know if that counts as being a star, because you're 11. Um, mm-hmm. It's supporting a- character. That's what it is. Eleven. Uh, secondly, uh, the kid who played Henry, uh-huh. I'm very curious about his work in The True Adventures of Wolf Boy, coming up in 2018. <laughs> I mean, it apparently stars, but it just says post-production. Uh-huh. So, you know, that might be one to keep our eye on. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. I thought he had a real punchable face. He remind there's this there's this really old like tutorial or video about the internet that's and in it there's a kid <laughs> who looks terrified like that he's like looking off screen and it's like f- clearly seems like there's someone off screen who's going to hit him <laughs> just really scared and that's who that's who he reminded me of <laughs> he just had this like sense of like personal fear that yeah. was like you can see behind his acting it's just like <laughs> being a scared person Also, gaunt eyes. Yeah. I mean... But I felt less sympathy for uh, Henry, because Henry's a piece of shit. Yeah. No, like, he's... Not only does he look like you could break him over your knee, you kind of want to. Also, the, uh... (laughs) The other kid... In Henry's class, like a little red-haired kid with the kind of lisp, talking about dodgeball. Mm-hmm. That poor guy, just in there, just in there, so they could use the line like, "But it's Henry. Nothing could happen to Henry." You little shit, get out of here! Get out of here with your stupid line. Oh, I mean the book, the, the movie's named after him. He couldn't die. And then the then the, oh, wait. And then the girls like, "We miss you." Yeah, we don't know if Henry's going to be okay. Crosses out, I miss you. 
stop. Just stop. <laughs> Henry over here, like, no. No. He did totally unrealistic. As you mentioned earlier, he should have been bullied. You're telling me not one kid took that guy's lunch money? Not one? Not no. one kid, was, like, probably a second grader could have. He was too busy standing outside of school, day trading. Hey, punk, give me your lunch money. I, I need mean, two dollars and fifty cents. He probably gave them. He probably gave them jobs. He was probably creating an employment oh, system Christ. and structure at the school. I mean, <laughs> that's why. He, that's why he could stand up to the bullies because secretly Fuck, the book he of was Henry, paying them. The Adventures of Wolf Boy. Bully. He's the wolf. <laughs> he's the wolf of Wall Street. Except he's in a. It school. turns out Henry didn't die. He just faked his death so that his he could use it form his mob and be a werewolf that would i mean that sounds like the better movie honestly <laughs> form the werewolf mob i don't know the, the movie where an 11 year old concocts a plan to murder a man and then his mom has to enact it it's like not it's stupid but it's like i've never seen that before yeah, I credit, mean, it was certainly to that. It's certainly original. unique. It's certainly not like I, it. Kind of act that movie actually kind of is. There is another movie that's like it that I'm blanking on the name of, but like not since the '90s. <laughs> I think not since the '90s has a movie been this stupid in this way. Now I'm just imagining like some film that they entirely <laughs> ripped off. Like you go back and it's just <laughs> like the Book of Benry, and it's like the same exact <laughs> fucking thing. Book of Boruto. Oh, don't, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. Uh, there's just a whole. Naruto is a certain thing in my life that just unlocks <laughs> a a flood. Of emotions and memories and just different things firing off and branching out. There's a lot of hatred there. There's a lot of hatred behind Naruto. Why? It's just whatever. Because Stephanie was a bitch. Stephanie? Girl in high school. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Eh. We can, that'll be another podcast, probably. <laughs> and, like, you know. Stephanie was a bitch podcast. Ben <laughs> bitches about some girl he knew in high school. Oh, that would probably, actually, probably lead into a torrent of other things. Oh, there's okay. enough, there's enough anecdotes there that it would just be, like, <laughs> saved by the Ben. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. S saved by the Ben. It's your new sitcom. Yeah, high school, high school days. It's ben just meets all world. about people. It's just all about the world shitting on Ben, basically. <laughs> yeah. So just your real life. <laughs> yeah, just my like the life story. People just call you cheese. Don't and weeb. Your favorite things. Your favorite things. I mean. I've been called worse by better people, so whatever. <laughs> That's fair. But, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I think you kind of blew your... Uh, <laughs> hmm? <laughs> blew your wad on this one. On this movie, honestly. Like, already? No. You think I'm done? I don't... You're not done? You got more to go? I don't know. His haircut was fucking dumb. <laughs> All those brains, and you don't have a, you can't like pick up a fashion magazine once in a while. You have like six hundred eighty thousand dollars in the bank. You can't like get yourself a nice suit or something. I'm just saying. No, that stuff's not important. He wanted his mom to get a new car specifically he, so that she would he, be harder to track by the police. He is very judgy of his mom's car. He, yeah, like weirdly, and the fact like, mom, you know that you could you don't have to work. Like, you could stay home and work on your children's stories. But no, suddenly playing video games is bad. When she is working and she gets home. 
How dare she? I mean, the movie does equate playing video games to alcoholism, pretty much. I didn't notice it's that. Pretty but much the same. Yeah, thing. you actually. Yes, that is. <laughs> now that you bring it up, it, yep. Despite the fact that pretty alcoholism much. was also in the film, a little bit anyway. Yep. I mean, it's just one. Like this movie doesn't know how to have proper threads, so just Sarah Silver. Like they go to Silver Silverman's house and she's pass out drunk. It's like the only thing. Nothing really comes of it. Yeah, but then there's this stuff before, like, where the... I thought that was going to be more prevalent, just because they had, like, kind of a back-to-back. Like, yeah, she comes over, they drink, and then she, like, gets drunk again. I'm like, oh, okay. Then no. Because why have one theme when you can have, like, 12? Yeah, you don't, you don't build a thing. You just have things happen. Yeah. And then your movie is over. <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> it's just a series of things that happen. Like, there are a lot of plot elements. They don't really go together at all. They're just, they're things. Here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. I just... But the important part is that Naomi Watts starts firing a sniper rifle out in the woods. That's cool. I'd watch that. (laughs) You know, so when she gets that gun, not even, yeah, when she gets the gun, and that whole little bit with the gun store. Also... The, the 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 ridiculousness of Henry like happening to stumble upon the secret conversation that gets you th- past like okay the background check stuff on buying a gun at that store like not only first off not only the <laughs> secret conversation but like a gun store that has blind spots in its security feed and one of them is apparently at the like counter <laughs> at the checkout counter is a blind spot i'm just you know okay <laughs> and then the fact and how did he know about, he knew all the blind spots already yeah yeah just based we on need the, the prequel I... <laughs> movie that shows off all the the pre-planning yeah. that went on before the planning and the fact that you just have to say i work for like i'm with dominic you only know yeah. one dominic Like, Uh the person might not just be, like, my husband is Dominic. I mean, there might not be a a Dominic. It's just, it's the code word, man. And once you know the code word, then you're in. I don't think that's how that works. That's how crime works, Ben. No. That's how crime works. You just need the one password. No, that's fucking stupid. And it's a real word. So you're saying in a situation where you're not trying to get in, you're just trying to get an illegal firearm. You also need a meaningless password. Plus the cash. That's you need a bribe a and the password. Yeah, I mean it's the same movie logic that's the like shittiest why every password is a is like a word that's meaningful to that character that you can figure out because that's how passwords work. That's people how I, definitely always look. Pick you of all things people, that are easy to figure you out. Of all people know that my designated password for most online things, Big Tits twenty five, that's meaningful to me. <laughs> big tits how many pairs of them do i want 25 close to my heart deep in my soul yeah i just i What's thought that? that right next to your 25 big dicks well no the only people who are allowed to be in the room with the tits <laughs> are the big, you know big dicks only it's on the it's on the door there's a sign uh-huh uh-huh instead of a password we got a guy with a ruler <laughs> set of dimensions so you have to get erect before you can enter <laughs> I mean unless you're like really big depends on if you're a grower or a shower <laughs> Hank uh-huh. and you know that's that's crass that's crass not a ruler like a tailor's measuring like measuring tape like you know I mean it doesn't have to be a ruler it could just be an object that's the right length like a Pringles can be bigger than that yeah, exactly. Just holding a Pringles can. <laughs> so then that's more inconspicuous. So people just think he's eating Pringles. They don't know he's out there he's for got, measuring. He's got, <laughs> he's got like the pizza flavored. <laughs> oh, we need to move on. <laughs> I'm too deep. I'm too deep in it. Oh, what have well, I Yeah, become? I mean, when you have a big dick, you have to go deep. <laughs> the only <laughs> what are you doing if you're not going deep 
Not getting, you're not getting surface area coverage. Come on. Oh fuck! I'm never gonna be able to eat Pringles again. <laughs> Someone, someone's gonna show up with like the snack size can, and I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, sounds about right." That's what I fucking thought. I'm gonna pull out my my. <laughs> My family sized tube of Pringles and just slam it on the table. Give them a little nod. They'll know. They'll, they'll pick up what I'm putting down. V. That's now see now that's advertising. Now that would be a Pringles ad. <laughs> that would actually be a top tier Pringles ad. <laughs> Guy one pulls out the snack size. Oh, what in what context though? Like at work? Why are you bringing the full size can to work though? God. Look, do you do you not bring your dick to work? I mean, come on. That's true. You never know when you might have to step up on someone. <laughs> Got to be ready. Constant vigilance. And you know that's the same guy who's, like, winking to all the girls that walk past, so he's probably going to be saddled with, like, you know, 25 pairs of tits, 25 sexual harassment claims, probably. Commercial gets oh, dark real sense. fast. There's a behind-the-scenes. <laughs> the director immediately goes to jail after making it. It's fine. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you base it on a true story. <laughs> all right we done i think so i think we've <laughs> really <laughs> we've really bottomed out on this on this pringle thing much like you know dicks and pringle cans there's a limit okay i'm done now it's out of my it's out of my system <laughs> Okay. I don't know how to go back to anything. It's yeah, like, no, that's oh. a that's a there's a big there is a large bridge to cross there. Oh Where man. Do we even leave off what specific points? Right, passwords, gun store, secret yeah. clubs, big dicks only. Okay. We're figuring out retracing our steps. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. This is okay. So my, I'm gonna explain my connection here, so we know where I'm coming from. I'm just, you know, back to the gun store, and just like weird shit, and Henry, and then more weird shit, and his mom. What is the deal with her? Like, I don't know. She was awfully touchy feely with uh, what was her name? Christina, the girl. Mm-hmm. Like she was really touchy feely, and it was awkward as hell. Like at first, I thought they were related somehow. I mean, I, I think it's the implication is because Christina doesn't have a mom anymore. So I guess yeah, she's kind of the motherly figure in her life. I mean, she becomes her mom. Yeah, like you just, but you don't usually I mean... just adopt your neighbor's kid. <clears throat> That's not. I mean, it's not usually how that works. I don't think. Under normal circumstances? Well, yeah. So you can assume a level of closeness. But, like, what was their level of, What was their level of closeness? Like, I'm going to pet your head once in a while? That doesn't seem right. That's not grounds for... <laughs> I don't know. It just... It, it struck me as a little odd. Mm-hmm. Maybe because... I think it would have been better if... If it had been set up, like, if Christina was at their house or something, or, like, they were close. Because, you know, that happens, like, in a oh. neighborhood or whatever. But, but no, just then she randomly. couldn't be being home being abused. I mean, she probably had a curfew. <laughs> like, all right, young lady, you need to be home at 10 o'clock for your abusing. I, come on, he wouldn't be that obvious about it. Pretty obvious about it. I mean, he had the benefit of his brother running... Child services or whatever. <laughs> Better be home by seven or I'm getting the family size Pringles can. <laughs> I 
Also, what was with the li- <laughs> what was with the lights thing? Did that have any significance? Like when she's they have the the first bit with like the ballerina, and that I kind of got like she's shining a flashlight through the thing and making a shadow on the wall. Sure, but then mm-hmm. she's just like flicking the lights on and off. I didn't I didn't understand that. I didn't understand the need for that at all. During her during her dance? Uh no, when after Henry's died and when the mom is looking when when his mom's looking through the window and she's just like uh, sitting there flicking the lamp on and off. I think that's just what Christina is? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's just stress. It's like okay. trying to depict stress. I think. No, she's sending an SOS. I yeah. <laughs> go back. It's like really? Morse code. She's definitely sending Morse code. It was all it was all planned out. I was really hoping. Um, so when Henry was like observing that whole thing, mm-hmm. they actually showed. I don't. I don't know. They showed the dad. They they showed what's his name. Hank Schrader, uh, going upstairs, <laughs> and then I th- I think they were out of the view of the window. I th- yeah. they like actually went out when the mom is viewing them. They I, it implied that they were in full view. I think. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's still that chance that the same thing happens, and she's just like inferring what's going on. I was really yeah. hoping that it would turn out that nothing was happening at all, and Henry was just a <laughs> fucking idiot. That would have been better. Like, guy was just like depressed that his wife had left him or died or whatever the hell it was, and he was going up to read his daughter a bedtime story, and Henry was just an, an idiot, a crazy person. Yeah, had, lots murders. Had a brain tumor that was impeding his ability to figure out what's real. Yeah, I mean that would have worked better. Oh yeah, for even sure. but even th- under the the like thing where, like the bo- moral of the movie is uh, maybe don't listen to your eleven year old if he tells you to murder someone. Yeah, but we I, don't do that. I suppose. Ah, I, was, I don't know. That guy was a child abuser. Fucking murder him. I, I was. Care. I was gonna say that if you had gone that if the movie had gone that route, then we couldn't end it with a suicide. But I suppose we could have had him not abuse his daughter, and then everyone thinks he did, and then he kills himself anyway. Everybody wins. Yeah. Except the daughter, whose life is now destroyed. Well, no. <laughs> so now, she, now she gets a mom, see? Yeah, but if her dad, in that scenario, if her dad is, like, a good person who takes care of her, like... <laughs> I don't nah, know. fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. He 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 was way too whiny about the fucking leaves. Being Look, raked, that was okay? fucking reasonable. He needed to he die. Needed to, no, no, that is a reasonable <laughs> request. Keep your shit off my lawn. Like he probably put it. He, he obviously put in time and effort trying to make his lawn look good. And this rich bitch next door can't even be asked. How much land did they have in the backyard? Uh, that whole fucking. I think treehouse. When they're like row houses next to each other, based it, almost. It looks like I I don't know. I took that as being just kind of like they live near a woods. Mm-hmm. Um, not necess not necessarily that they owned it. There was one shot. Oh, that, so you're telling me Henry is like building a house on property he doesn't own? Is that what you're telling me? I mean. Like, look, he probably fucking called the, like, council board and got a sign-off on the construction. <laughs> You're not wrong. Like, could, yeah, him on the phone, look. some contractors, a detailed blueprint. This is why we need the prequel. It's all about <laughs> so minor, minor details. But there is Henry one shot that... Planning on- more shit out. Honestly, it looked... I don't know if it happened multiple times, but the one time I noticed it, it almost seemed like a mistake. You could totally see a wooden fence in the background of the woods. And it looks like, if you can imagine their house, like, okay, imagine the road, and then you have their houses. Mm -hmm. Then behind their houses is the woods. Mm -hmm. It looked like the fence was behind the woods. So, like, it was closed (laughs) off with the opening to their houses. And I Uh don't know if they meant to show that. 
but it was there, <laughs> so I just don't know what to think. Like, there was a yeah, big was fucking also, creek and everything. There's also a river. Yeah. yeah, like, it was not just a small little creek. It was, like, <laughs> fairly sized. Yeah. I I don't know. I'm also... I, I don't know. Dude was bad enough to abuse his kid and bring a... I thought he brought his revolver with him when he went out to check the woods at night. And then I thought Henry's mom was going to die for... <laughs> You know, for yeah, well, that's. <laughs> I mean, the movie isn't operating on any sense of logic, but yeah, like, why would he? You thought this thing was gonna happen? Fuck you. I mean, that'd be good if then then Dean Dorgan just shoots her and then <laughs> just, uh, just keeps getting away with it. Except he wouldn't. Oh, he got busted because no. he got then busted then he gets, by unrelated things. But then he gets he gets busted by the dancing. No, then he gets. I guess custody Christina of, just wouldn't have a. He would have gotten custody of Peter. Well, no, because he would have gotten busted from the dancing because that showdown in the forest didn't actually mean anything. The whole plot of her planning to kill him doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't actually matter with things that happen because it's the the teacher who figures it out because of the dance, the power of dance. Yeah, but if she wouldn't have talked to him, he might not have yeah. killed himself. You're right. So it would have been a drawn out trial or something. Yeah, we could have got like another hour. That's the, the extended <laughs> yeah. director's well, cut. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> the trial of Henry. Even though Henry's been oh, dead no. for half a movie already. Because no, you know that you know that fucker made a little recording. That would have been the closing statement at the trials. <laughs> Henry on a <laughs> it's, oh, little little corner. Yeah, just see him testifying. He, he's already thought out all the questions he's going to get asked in yeah. the order and timing they're going to get asked. I to thought him. you might so say that. Uh, Your Honor, I would like I to like... request a five-minute recess. I really like the idea of this movie, of this movie creating a universe uh, like the Saw movies, and just they finding ways to keep having Henry's plans enacted further and further along. Just yeah, just keep rolling it. He out. has more and more apprentices. Oh no! Carrying on Henry's oh, no. work. The end of the movie is just Peter <laughs> picking up the uh, tape recorder, <laughs> like <laughs> pressing. Or no, all you hear is Henry going, "This is what I need you to do." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is your mission. Should you choose to accept it? Oh no! This is the start. What, do you, of what would you even? What mission would you Impossible. even call the sequel? The Book of Henry. I mean, it... <laughs> no, it would be like. The the uh the curse of Henry. The curse of Henry. Oh no. Henry's revenge. Uh Henry's revenge on what? Everything got <laughs> solved. The Phantom Henry. The Henry Wars. Ugh. My My Henry's keeper. Henry on the train. Revenge of the Henry. Henry in the Rye. Distinct from Henry Revenge. Henry and Hedwig. Henry Potter. That would be a that would be a hell of a crossover. Henry going up against Voldemort. <laughs> dies midway through the series. Ron has to like follow out all the instructions. <laughs> So we're doomed, is what you're saying. I mean, you know what? I'll bet J.K. Rowling has probably tackled this. Does the spell come from the person or from the words or both? Because what happens if Henry says meaningfully through the tape recorder, like, I've had a cadaver, then what? <laughs> it would probably cast. He could probably <laughs> cast his Patronus just... from the death. I oh, mean, yeah. we do basically have a case of someone inheriting a dead person's Patronus. So. Which is gross. Very <laughs> obviously a euphemism. Like, just, and not even, like, literally just the person who that person wasn't into fucking, basically. That's who inherits your Patronus. The person you didn't like who liked you. Right? That, that makes that, sense. It, it rolls with that the wizarding out. world. Yeah. <laughs> When you get cucked, oh. you inherit the Patronus. 
of the woman or person or whatever. Fucking Chad Gryffindors. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, only <laughs> only Slytherins get cucked, clearly. Gryffindors don't get cucked. I mean, I, you know what they say, Gryffindors have at least three inches on their wands compared to Slytherins. Look, Gryffindors got the big Prindle's hands. Slytherins get leftovers. Yeah. It's like they a, get like a... It's like a bag of Lay's. They get a Ziploc bag full oh. of crisp chips. Oh. That sounds about right. I feel like, you know... I think Henry would be in Hufflepuff. Like, initially... I think he would might, be in... Mm. One might say Ravenclaw because he was smart, but he was also a useless jackass. I mean, Slytherin because he plotted a murder. That's true. Pretty quickly. Okay, we can agree that he wouldn't be in Gryffindor because, like, making your mom do your no. killing for you is not the definition <laughs> yeah, no. of courage. No. Plotting and plotting out like Rube Goldberg devices. Also, <laughs> yeah, that's... she might have just been rejected from Hogwarts altogether. <laughs> Day one, he tries to explain the science behind magic. I mean, it's kicked out. He, he would he would be in Slytherin because he sucks. <laughs> that's, <funny. laughs> that's true. Actually, he'd probably get along because, fantastically look, with... Uh, and he's not in Hufflepuff because he has a movie named after him. That's true. Hufflepuffs are just don't <laughs> matter. I don't know. He seems like the type of kid that... Uh, what was it? Uncle Vernon? Uncle Vern? I can't remember. It's mm -hmm. been so, so damn long since I've seen any bits of the movies or books that involve him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like... I could see Henry being all like... The post doesn't arrive on Sundays. That's a Henry sort of thing to say. You're not wrong. Correcting someone and judging them for leaning into their video game. He was wrong on that. I mean... <laughs> he was absolutely... Like, leaning into it doesn't help, you know? Yeah, it does. If you are reacting better by leaning into the like whatever you're doing in a game... It helps you. I mean, that was some primo movie overacting playing video games, though. That was classic movie video game playing. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty solid. <laughs> and also the fact that she was apparent, like... Was she just leaning into the screen, or was she leaning, like, sideways? She was, like, all over the place. Okay. She was, they like... They could have at least had her, like, playing a racing game or some shit if you're leaning sideways. No. She was playing Gears? It looks like... I That was my thought, was Gears of War. They cleverly didn't title it or anything. Mm, I think it was Gears. Or fake Gears. I kind of was hoping for, uh, for, like, a super great product placement. Mom, you have to quit playing that new Gears of War game. It's too addictive. <laughs> I'm worried that you're going to beat the awesome levels too quickly and get to the fulfilling multiplayer online. Just looks yeah, that was only... I think the last Mission Impossible had a Halo ad in it where a character... Benji was playing Halo at work. And it was Halo that hadn't come out yet. Uh... When that movie came out. Yeah, they did that, um, fuck, was that with, uh, I think the show Chuck did that? They had a Halo okay. thing, like mm. a pre-release something, I believe. Um, oh, was I just gonna, fuck, lost my train of thought. It, nice. It's like, just entirely gone. Chuck, <laughs> Halo, something with Halo... But the House of Cards did that with, like, PlayStation, I think. Mm. Kevin Spacey is all like, oh, I love my PlayStation Vita. I take it with me when I'm in the car. I feel like that uh, Sony wouldn't approve that ad today. Yeah. Well, I love my 
PlayStation Vita. It's a great icebreaker with the kids. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, that'd be a terrible icebreaker. They'd yell at him for playing something shitty. <sighs> then again, it actually... <laughs> I wish they could have gotten like found a way for him to say that he played like Persona on it or something. That would just that would actually be the best. Well, I use it to play Persona 4 Golden. And then he could judge someone for thinking that the, you know, his waifu was shit. Yeah. The real house of cards. People's feelings. It's a metaphor. Ugh. How? You got anything else? I don't know. I'm just like thinking. This that reminded me of just how terrible, like Henry's and Peter's mom is. Like the part I mean, where she was like, "I don't know how to be a mom." Like how. I want, the, in, again, like, going back to the prequel film that we desperately need. Like, when did Henry <laughs> start exhibiting all this intelligence? And when did he start, oh. like, becoming fully independent? Like, there had to be an inter- he was just out of the womb. He's clearly like, just the tax forms in his hand as he's coming out. He's filling them out. Like, Dr. Got a cuts the cord. Suit. And, like, he's basically Boss Baby. Is what I'm <laughs> oh, saying. no. Boss Baby was an infinitely better movie than this, though, is the difference. See, I'm just envisioning, like, you know, wow. the doctor gives him, like, the spank of life, and then he's just like, buy low, sell high. Like, that's how he started. I mean, yeah. He <laughs> Look, he had to get started on day trading somewhere. I don't know where you think he got started on day trading. Clearly. Just inherently he knew how to do it. <laughs> just kind of strolled up to the payphone at school one day, just dialed the number in his heart. Just dialed 1 800 stocks. 1 800 was... stocks now. <laughs> and he Ugh. was good to go. Ugh. Probably took out a secret mortgage on his mom's house. I mean, I I was gonna say like the sequel film is probably her like getting thrown into poverty because she wasn't paying attention to any of the shit that she that he told her like before he died. And it I don't know it just bugs me how not even that she was a bad mom. It's not even the bad mom stuff that like bugs me because whatever like some parents aren't necessarily cut out for the like childhood aspects of things like raising kids but like she wasn't even looking at financial statements or anything like you had to do that henry it's like (laughs) oh my god it was so fucking infuriating just the worst Uh, like she had an accountant yeah apparently or she could you know afford an accountant i also don't know why henry is doing that stuff at that point can't he just hire an accountant they have enough money yeah. Oh. I guess that's the only way he can feel things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's <laughs> only those are the only two things that make him feel: filling out taxes and uh, plotting murders. I don't feel that's pleasure it. anymore. One of their kids are running. Playing, that's why the uh, laughing. Goofing around with friends, yeah. I'm inside trying to get that last high from firing also up TurboTax. The, also in the prequel, Henry was plotting suicide before he discovered his neighbor was being abused, and that invigorated his lust for life. He was plotting the murder of Glenn Sickleman. Clearly. <sighs> Also that he wanted to bone Sarah Silverman, I guess. Yeah, that whole... <laughs> I don't even know. Which, I mean, and it's fine. Definitely the kid like... wants to bang an older woman? Okay. It was the part I, yeah, where she was into that. him. <laughs> the part where she goes over and kisses him. And I'm like, 
what the fuck are you doing, movie? I think... And then that character's just out of the movie, too. My... It's also... My interpretation of that scene was the director or somebody, at the very least, wanted that them Sarah to That Sarah Silverman really just wanted to kiss that kid. No, like, they were they were meant to bang, but they knew that they couldn't mm. do that, so they just yeah. had them kiss. Mm. I'm just saying. Good, like, make a wish foundation on less <laughs> bang. Oh, no. Uh... Yeah, where was Make a Wish Foundation anyway? You could have burned his wish on a killing guy. <laughs> <laughs> I really dropped the ball on that one. Conveniently, I mean, that wouldn't have conveniently been conveniently set in a world without Make a Wish Foundation, so that he couldn't wish to. Uh... Look, that's too simple. Everything needs to be a Rube Goldberg machine, okay? It's how he lived his life, because he's basically Jigsaw. Is that how he lived his life? Yes. Not that... I mean, they don't show everything. This prequel movie's for. <laughs> but he did spend his, his recreational time building ridiculous contraptions. And then he plotted a ridiculous murder. It was overly complicated a and involved. really, really inefficient murder. That's not like, oh, this will look like an accident. You just sniped a man. Yeah. Do you think they planned it? Well, they purchased a <laughs> silencer and a high caliber sniper rifle and then made sure to get rounds that would explode on impact. Might have been uh-huh. a hunting accident. <laughs> like, I mean, naturally, she would don a pair of, like, you know latex gloves or whatever and put a comical hat with deer antlers on it on his head (laughs) then she cuts off his head and puts a snowman's head on his head and then she puts his head on a snowman's body and then a serial killer clearly did it I mean but then you have to kill more people so that it looks like it's an M.O. Instead of just... Nah. <laughs> I'm sure that just happens all the time. They'll connect it to something. <laughs> Cop rolls up on the scene. Holy shit, it's the snowman killer. Oh, another one. <laughs> another one. That's his 150th victim this year. Turns out he's actually some sort of Death Note cure sort of thing. Only kills people that uh, he suspects of child abuse. The snowman killer? Henry. I mean, I, th- I think I've got everything out of my system. Snowman was a movie that came out this year. I wasn't pulling that out of my ass. That was, that was a movie where a person, that was a murder that happened. I mean, I, I figured you weren't pulling it out of nowhere, but <laughs> yeah, I was going to let it lie. Thing. <laughs> it's fine. All right. Yeah, I'm done. We've okay. sufficiently uh, picked apart the quote-unquote film that is Book of Henry. Not the worst movie I saw this year. Mm, don't tell me. Was it the Frozen short? The Frozen short was pretty fucking awful. But it's only 20 minutes, so it's got that yeah, on How long things. did it feel like? That's what's I important. I mean, it felt like 40, is what it felt okay, like. Okay, so it's still not quite feature length. Okay, what yeah. was the worst film? It did have it did have more songs than actual Frozen, though. Which is why it's bad. In those, no, well, also all those songs. All the songs were bad. They were all bad. The, the worst movie was Suburbicon. Right. The movie with the premise of, hey, you know, being a kid is kind of like being black. Right. Yep. We have gone. Yeah. You. We've. We've talked about this. Yeah. Do they play, that movie's do worse. They play, uh, the movie's less hilarious. Like Country bad. Roads in that one. Was that the one? No. No. Okay. No. No. Logan Lucky. Kingsman Two. Um. Trailer for Alien Covenant. 
sadly oh, not some... Book of Henry. No. Imagine Henry dead and his mom holding him and <laughs> Country Roads comes on. <laughs> infinitely. I mean, Country Roads infinitely better would scene. be played at the... It would just be during the interpretive dance about <laughs> oh, no. child abuse. Oh. Take me home to the place where I belong. All right. Yeah, that's... I'm calling it. Yeah, that's a, that's a note to end on. Pun intended. Yeah. I've actually recorded this entire podcast in advance, unbeknownst to Ben, and just all my responses lined up perfectly to everything he said, because I'm an evil genius. The Book of Hank. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha. You can email us at saltcirclepodcast at gmail.com. Find our episodes at soundcloud.com slash saltcircle and leave a comment. Find us on Twitter at saltcirclepod, and you can find me on Twitter at comic panels. And you can find me on Twitter at bean underscore LP. Have a big Pringles can kind of day. Mm.